Good evening. So, thank you to Dr. Nagler and the board for inviting the high school to present on what's changing um, at the high school in terms of technology and instruction. Before I do that, just for the record, every time Dr. Nagler goes on a conference, Mr. Gavin and myself break out into a cold sweat. Um, so, <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure all the administrators do, but that's okay. Um, but our conversation on um, when Dr. Nagler returned really talked about something that is perfectly in line with what our presentation is about. And it's really about changing to being learners rather than knowers of information. And um, I just want to introduce the team that's here. Um, it is our team, um, and I really feel strongly about that. Um, Mr. Puccio is here, um, Mrs. Fahey, Ms. Trojanowski, which is a very long name to, to say, Ms. Dvorak, which is a very hard name to pronounce, um, and Mr. Desiree from our administrative team. And then a uh, very special thanks to our teacher team who is here tonight um, that really um, has embraced this um, new way of thinking about teaching and learning in a very short time. Um, Mary Owens is here, math teacher. Um, Susan Palladino is here. She's a special education teacher specializing in life skills, developmental disabilities, along with Katherine Haberman, who is sitting to her right. Jason Sauter, another math teacher in the high school. And finally, Francine Sclafani, who is a social studies teacher. Um, the nice part of having these teachers here is, for me, it's more real um, than just hearing me talk about it. And you'll hear their day-to-day -day experiences with some examples of, of student work to really bring it to life. Um, the better part is that these are veteran teachers. These are high leverage people in our building who really make an impact day-to-day, um, -day, not only in students' lives, but in the other teachers' lives that they work with. And that's really um, important to us as an administrative team is that we can grow this and, and cultivate a, a really good use of a thousand iPads in the high school. So um, I'm, I'm going to be brief, the administrative team is going to be brief, and it's really um, about the great work that our teachers are doing tonight. The clicker works. Okay, so I just want to re-remind um, the board that um, we are focused around the four C's in, in learning, and that is really communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration. And that's what drives everything we do um, in the classroom as well as with the iPad. Uh, the nice thing about these four C's is that they are technology agnostic. It's just a change in um, instruction, and the device just makes it all um, the better. Uh, another reminder, the uh, Samer model, which is from uh, Ruben Puentadora's work with Apple, uh, the, the model works from substitution to redefinition in terms of like Bloom's taxonomy for technology. And I put us between augmentation and modification because um, we've, we've surpassed in many areas the substitution piece, and, and we're right around augmentation modification with um, definitely some pieces of redefinition that you'll see this evening. Again, just to start, um, we started with a structure. We didn't start with talking about instruction. That's what we're starting to talk about now and the examples you'll see, but we started with a backbone. So how is it that we're going to deliver a curriculum how are we going to communicate and how are we going to manage workflow uh, with an iPad touch device? So our iTunes U becomes that content holder and, and we have, and uh, Ms. Fahey will talk about the number and, and quantity of our courses, but just to understand that when we've developed these courses, it's a work in progress. And everything that our teachers do, they can add to that course and they become resources for future years. So it's, it's this giant um, file folder that, that you're able to um, store a great deal in. Uh, E-Backpack, as you know, with an a Apple device, you don't have uh, uh, My Documents like you would on a computer. So we use E-Backpack as our um, workflow solution organizing system, our filing cabinet for student work. You can also grade with their name. And finally, Edmodo, although it does more than communication and our teachers do more than that, it's designed to keep um, students and parents informed of what's going on 
inside of our classroom. It also has some internal microblogging that, that um, teachers have been doing in order to spark conversations outside the classroom about what's going on. Ms. Fahey. Good evening, everybody. Thanks again for having us. So this is a screenshot of the course catalog that you'll see in iTunes U. We have 74 courses right now that are open to the public. So anybody that searches Mineola Union Free School District can open up one of these courses and subscribe to the course. Like Dr. Smith said, they're live. So as the teachers continue to work on them and develop them, the subscriber would get updates that there's been an addition to the course. So this is just, this is actually two screens kind of doubled up there that you can see what we offer. And one of the best things about this is it's fostered a lot of collaboration with the teachers. So if someone's teaching the same course as someone else, it's given them a great excuse to work together to make this iTunes U course so the kids have a <coughs> common experience regardless of who the instructor may be. This is a screenshot of what eBackpack would look like on the iPad. So the first screen is their home screen. The kid would open that up. There is a place right here. That's the My Files spot. So a lot of times the kids will go into iTunes U, find something, open it in eBackpack, and save it to My Files. And they'll organize that by their class, and then they could submit it directly to their teacher. This screen on the right is the student's schedule. So it's just organized by period. And you'll see there's a class of 2020 folder. So for the guidance office, each grade has their own class of folder where the guidance office can push out announcements. When we do our classroom visits, we can push out resources through eBackpack as well, exit tickets, things of that nature. And this is a screenshot of what Edmodo would look like. So just again, like Dr. Smith, the kids can have discussions with one another. They can ask a question to the group and the, their classmates can respond to them or the teacher can respond. Teachers can put short informal polls on there or exit tickets on there as well. Um, kids can use that to post their notes so that if this, another student is absent, they can get the notes from that day, things like that. And this last slide that I have for you is just a visualization of what we want the high school to look more like. So we're shifting from a traditional classroom with kids in rows copying notes to something a little more 21st century where the students are collaborating with one another, the teachers fostering that learning, facilitating that learning, the kids are using the iPads to be in charge of their own learning. There's a lot of, you can see here, I think they're playing Kahoot in the bottom, so I don't know how many of you guys know Kahoot. I love Kahoot, so that's a great image. So hopefully we'll see a lot more of that moving forward. And now it's Amy's turn. This is a good sign. I was hoping it was going to be for me, but you can have <laughs> um, So good evening, everybody. So the next portion of our presentation is talking about what's specifically changing at Mineola High School. We're going to have some examples offered by our teachers in terms of what instruction looks like and how students are developing diverse work products by using the technology. So we're gonna discuss some specific curriculum supports in terms of content area, um, opportunities for individualization and differentiation of the instruction that appeals to our students' learning <laughs> styles. Um, student engagement, Mrs. Fahey talked specifically about Kahoot as one of the ways that our students are engaged in the content. Um, we have opportunities for varied student work products. Students are engaging in a, in a wide <coughs> variety of apps to produce um, different products that they may not have had the ability to do before and then the opportunity for teachers to provide authentic and timely feedback to our students. The feedback is often actionable and it's provided almost immediately. The students can respond directly to it. So to start off, in addition to the backbone that was discussed with iTunes U, eBackpack, and Edmodo, we also are um, incorporating specific curriculum supports by content area. We have MathSpace, which is an app as well as an online platform for students to use when they um, are engaging in their math classes. We have LightSail that's focusing on English and reading. And then we also have Think Circa, which is um, an online program that we're using for science and social studies that are, that's focusing specifically on developing argumentative writing skills. And the instructional leaders are gonna speak specifically on how this targets students' individual needs and helps them grow according to um, standard mastery in addition to Lexile levels. So I'm gonna hand it over to um, Mr. Desiree, who's gonna talk a little bit about MathSpace.
Good evening, everyone. I'm back again, <laughs> once more. Excited to talk about uh, math space. When I was here last, the middle school was discussing math space, so they were really uh, excited about it. Uh, the screenshot you're looking at is what the kids will see as they try to solve a problem. Uh, but this is not the most important aspect I've seen in math space yet. Uh, when you bring a program to the school and then you see the transformation that this program is affecting, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I had the pleasure of observing formal observation for teachers and then I see creative ways the teachers are incorporating the math space in. Uh, instead of having a do now and a paper now, they have something on math space for the students to do. And what's amazing about it is several teachers, they will, at the beginning, they will bring a screen and they will say, all right, last night for the homework, 96% participation. And the kids will turn around and say, oh, it's the one who didn't do it. And so it fostered the idea that, you know, when you have work, you have to do it. And then the next thing they will bring as a screen will be, okay, this particular questions, it's only 46% of you were able to do it. Therefore, let's discuss this. And then they find a student who did it right and who says, okay, what did you do? What did you see? Can you share with the rest of the class? So this is one way I've seen math space being used, great use of technology, great use of a, a program. And uh, the teachers are here. I don't want to say too much. They're going to show you some of the stuff they've been using. And um, I'm very excited about this. All right? I think that's my only slide. Oh. Good evening, everyone. LightSail is a program that we're using in our English classes. It is a program that provides a personalized library for our students. <coughs> students take a what's called a power challenge. And after they've taken this power challenge, the program's able to produce a vast library of texts that are um, anchored to their Lexile level. And so we have a video uh, showcasing students who are describing their experience with the program. Dale, can you describe your experience with the app? Uh, okay, so when I first logged in, I had to take a test about reading. And when I was done, it gave me a whole bookshelf to choose from. And I liked all the books on there because it wasn't too hard or too easy. And when I chose a book, it gave me um, a certain amount of time to read it, which like sets a goal for me. So when I first started reading, I liked how it made you like fill in the words because it in encourages like active reading. And um, I just it was easier to read like that because I wasn't just like looking at it and not paying attention. I was reading it to make sure that I got the right word. How has um, using light cell changed your reading habits? Well, before I used light cell, it was really hard for me to choose a book to read, and I didn't like reading. But like with light cell, I have good choices, and I like reading. Yeah. It helped me because now I'm more into books because before I liked it, I wasn't really into it as much, but now I am because it gives me so many different books that I like. Great. You, you can select any book that you want to read, and then once you select it, you can check it out, and then if you need more time, you can just check it in and check it out again. And when you read, there's going to be boxes, like green boxes, and then you're going to have to fill out the words, like match, match, which match, and you can check your progress, so how are you doing, and how many pages um, you have left to finish the book, and that's it. <laughs> They were, they were real troopers when I was interviewing them. Um, one thing that I think uh, that the students didn't mention was that the collaboration piece is brought in through this app as well. Teachers are able to comment on student annotations, on responses um, in a timely manner. So I think that that's useful for the students to see right away while they're reading. 
next. Uh, so Think Circa is another program that we're using. It supports our science and social studies teachers. So Circa actually uh, stands for Claim, Evidence, Reasoning, Counter Argument, and Audience. And those are the elements that make up argumentative writing. And that's what this program supports. This is a snapshot of an article about our founding fathers. And students read the text, which is anchored to their level. Teachers can choose texts that have uh, a variety of levels for your uh, variety of students and their learning needs. And while they're reading, they're asked questions that monitor their understanding. Uh, they have summative questions at the end, and the lessons also provide uh, essays that they can write to practice those um, argumentative writing skills. They also have the opportunity to highlight while they read, and they can organize the elements that they've highlighted. So when they go to write their essay, they have the things that they've found important, so they can incorporate them right away in their essay. The uh, useful thing about Think Circa is that teachers can upload articles if they are not pr uh, preferring the lessons that the program has provided. I'm going to start just with a couple of shameless plugs for the life skills. I have to stand here. Okay. So a couple of shameless plugs for the life skills. Um, so we have a class set of iPads, and um, the kids have really done. We have certain apps. We have Brass Kids that um, we news use, to News to You that we use, Vizzle that we use on the iPad. And one of the things that um, in this 21st century, um, what do we call like our meetings committee that we have, and so during this time. Dr. Smith was like, well, you should try having the kids learn something and not just you spitting out the information. And of course, I was like, that doesn't work for me because my kids are too limited and cognitively they wouldn't be able to do it. But I was like, I'll try. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. So I opened it up for my higher functioning kids for in their science class and we were doing organs, which um, Mr. Escobar came and watched us. And I said to them, I was like, well, how about we try something different? You guys pick your own organ, and you're going to find some information. You're going to find pictures. And some of them were like, OK. And then one girl said, no. I said, so you want me to just talk to you? She goes, well, I'm lazy, so that's easier. <laughs> I was like, OK, now I need to really rethink this. So we started doing um, Keynote, Keynote and Adobe Voice. And then Adobe Voice came in with Dr. Smith came in, and one of our students, Jack, um, was there. And Dr. Smith just said, Jack, if you do it this way, and this was Jack went like this, and this is what he came up with on the brain, on his own. This is the human brain. <coughs> this is the cerebrum. That is a cerebellum. And this is the brain stem. The brain looks like a wet sponge. The brain stem takes care of things your body does automatically. The frontal lobe is involved with speech and movement. A neurologist takes care of our brains. Do you know the human brain weighs three pounds? The brain is amazing. So that is what Jack came up with completely as on his own. <laughs> and um, you know, we thank Mrs. Fishman for getting us those class set of iPads to to help us out. Um, it's it's just been such a a unique experience with them of how they. I mean, Jack must have changed his music like three times it was like, I have to see Dr. Smith because he was changing his music, he changed his background. And overall, like the class, um, I also just want to say like we just went on a dance to mm -hmm. um, Hewlett Woodmere invited us to a fall bash that our kids went on. Um, I do want the board to know on December 22nd is our winter tea, so write those down in your calendars because that's our, you will be getting to save the date um, for that. But, but Twitter was also very yes. instrumental in us being able to uh, send out some videos and some pictures of our kids having an amazing time at the dance. So yes. We have a Twitter account that I'm yeah, sure most of you are skills that following. We're out there. Yeah, shameless plug, but. <laughs> yes, so, um, but what we wanted to do with math was that Jack has been in our math class now um, for several years, and he's in my math class this year, and I started to notice that he was doing a lot more, and he was really bored. He was constantly anxious, walking back and forth, and just, on a hunch, Mary Owens had sent us some videos, and Jack watched them. And Jack was originally... I remember Jack from middle school. I worked with him in middle school, and I mean, this was a kid who barely spoke, barely interacted. Um, 
had so much anxiety, he would like pinch his arms and have like welts on his arms. And you really couldn't push him because he would almost push back and like kind of get angry. But we had him a couple years in the high school and you know, I think anyone who knows him now, he's quite social, he interacts with adults and peers. And um, as he became more comfortable, we kind of thought that maybe we'll challenge him a little bit. And then Sue started showing the videos and he just kind of started to pick stuff up. Which and we're gonna say algebraic equations, <laughs> which leads us to Mary Ellen, so. Take it away. <laughs> okay. So Sue came to me and she said that Jack could solve equations. So I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Jack can solve equations. So I sent her my videos created with Lisa Marino um, with Robo Education. And he was watching the videos and basically doing the problems that we were doing in the videos. So he came to me, he interrupted my class to show me the whiteboard of him solving the equation. So we discussed maybe Jack can come sit in my class. So Jack came to my class one period a day, and I was trying to give him work that he could handle and teach my class at the same time. And it was a huge challenge. And I started to get nervous thinking, I don't think I could do this successfully. So I called Mr. Puccio and I said, every other kid has an, an iPad in my classroom. We need to get one for Jack. And within 24 hours, <laughs> Jack had an iPad walking around the building showing everyone that he had his own iPad. <laughs> and we started him on math space, giving him material that he could handle. And he is, I mean, thriving in an eighth grade common core algebra class. Of course, wow. he's not doing all of the same things that the other kids are doing, but he is interacting with them, which leads to this, do you want to show do the video show or the video math or space? Do you want to show the math space first? Whichever. Um, you choose. The math, I guess the math space. So this is Jack with other eighth grade <coughs> boys doing the exact same math sprint um, on a Friday. We do some mental math sprints sometimes. Um, and this is his math space dashboard, which you can't really see, but I have the ability on math space to pull questions from all different places. So this top piece is from Common Core fifth grade. So I mean, do you know what level he was working on in your classroom? It was never really clear as yeah. what he could do because we were never able to find something that was able to showcase what he, he was just flying through stuff we had at his level. So this was the first time we were really seeing what he was capable of achieving with this. So I take lessons from fifth grade, sixth grade. This beginning algebra section is actually, according to Math Space, aligned with a community college course. So he, we pick topics that I know that he can handle, and he watches videos to learn, and he, um, you know. So just to give you an idea on math space, I have 52 students. He has the third most points on math space <laughs> because he loves doing it, and he will do extra work whenever he can. He also gets stickers. He gets stickers. <laughs> which he loves, he which is his motivator. Which I just counted today, he has 29 stickers. So that means he's been in my class 29 days so far. Yeah. And again, the idea is not only is Jack getting so much out of this, but the other kids in the class are getting so much out of it as well. Um, these boys especially sort of took him under their wing and he even did a group project with them. Occupy Malik is trying to design a triangle for his garden. The second side of the triangle is one more than the first side. The third side is twice the first side. The perimeter is 25. Find the length of all three sides of the triangle. Let x equal the first side. Let x plus 1 equal the second side. <laughs> Let the third side equal 2x. Now you just got to combine like terms. So this, the x's will turn out to 4x. 4x plus 1 equals 25. Then you minus one from each side. That's 24 equals 4x. And if you do, divide them both by 4x equals 6. And this is something we learned that Jack can do. 
like completely mm -hmm. amazing. And he has just, I mean, it's even, and Jack, we found he's amazing at mental math and he gets such praise from the other kids in the class. Yeah, the other kids use a calculator for everything and he can do multiplication and division in his head. We taught him negative numbers. He never had used those before. Never. So it has been the most rewarding experience I've ever. <laughs> so, and we, we really thank that to just all the things that none of this would have been possible without the use of the iPads. He never would have been able to be included and to feel part of a group without the use of the iPads. Because when he's sitting in Mary's class, like, he used to come to me. Now he doesn't even show up at my door. He just go, leaves. He comes without an aid now. He Does he, he told, her an aid aid. told her to leave. Yeah. Told her to leave. And he goes in there and he's with that group and he says to his, you know, his new friends, hey, hey, when he's walking through the walls. Comes back and tells us all the kids he worked with that day and it's it's mm -hmm. nice. The social part the socialization is, I think, just has been great. incredible. Yeah. And his family <clears throat> is thrilled because like his sister has said he has never come home and really talked about school. And now all he talks about is math and his friends in math and what they did in math and how he used his iPad and she, he goes home with his iPad and his scientific calculator. He comes home with that. No. Every day. Yeah, it's a graphing calculator. So we thank that and we know it's all possible based on that. So very exciting thing. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. No, wait, wait, stay there, stay there. <laughs> you just said um, thanks to the iPad, but also thanks to your own curiosity and your own ability to, to be there in the very literal sense of being able to listen and be present and witness your students, and then to pursue your own curiosity and to collaborate. So thanks to you. Well, that was thank also you. thanks yes. to our 21st Century Committee. We <laughs> <laughs> never would have thought about that beforehand, so it all worked out very nice. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he's quiet. <laughs> So that was a really tough act to follow with our <laughs> dynamic <laughs> teachers and, and the pride that they take in their work, but thank you guys so much for sharing that. Um, some of the video tutorial that um, Mrs. Owens referenced, um, in collaboration with the Robo Media, our teachers across all content areas are coming up with these really creative ways to either express the content or review skills that are learned in their classes. So here are some examples. Um, they're being uploaded into their iTunes U courses, and it's really neat for the students to see their teachers kind of as these YouTube videos instead of the generic tutorial YouTube videos going through. And the team for, from Robo Media is incredibly creative. I know the one in Mr. Luskoff's uh, Global History, he gains another arm to point to something else. I know Dr. Nagler has fooled around with a chainsaw, so there's a few <laughs> ways that you can become very creative when working Only on video, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing we wanted to highlight, we actually are offering, um, Ms. Sheehan is offering a 3D printing class. So this is a, um, what's it called? Time, time lapse. lapse. Thank you. I was going to say fast forward, but <laughs> no, it's a time lapse video that really highlights the process that the students engage in when they're in the 3D printing course. So you'll see that the students are going from pen and paper design to actually self selecting what program they're going to use on the computers, and then you'll see it 3D printed. And I actually have two models of what they were working on. Um, so we can pass these around. This is the finished product. And this is what actually comes out of the 3D printer. So you'll see you can actually break this one apart a little bit. There's a bottom wrap that you can peel apart with supports that ultimately this will end up in this rocket ship. So you'll take off all the pieces. So definitely feel free to do that and enjoy the time lapse video.
actually, I'm not an expert on 3D printing at all, but to gain a little bit more information in preparation for the presentation, I went to some of the students and they were talking all about why they needed the supports when the angle was raised 69 degrees off of the base. and So that's why they have the, the raft and all the supports and they take such pride in their work as well. So it's a really interesting um, process that I hope to learn more about also. Um, yeah, Ms. Matz is having fun ripping I it apart. Am. I <laughs> am. Please do it. I'll share. Um, the next slide is just a couple of screenshots that highlight the opportunities for varied student work products. Um, in different classes. So we have a, a screenshot of students using Quizlet, eBackpack with the timely feedback, and that's more of the substitution where we're doing an electronic worksheet as opposed to a hard copy worksheet um, that also allows for differentiation. And then we have a poll that teachers and students are able to answer questions directly on Edmodo in real time and get feedback and respond to one another's questions. up here this is um my course is my college pre calculus course and it doesn't say my name but that's one of the things we share together with a couple other teachers um i think it's in lisa marino's name but like one of the great things about it is that we all work together so when i put things up here she puts things up here we talk to each other and what happens is if you can see the whole course is kind of outlined it's highlighted under functions right now what i did was i took a really tough topic and i kind of tried to do something different like <coughs> sue was saying about you know kind of a little nervous about it. This is an entire week's worth of uh, work. And what it says is, I have a video up here. I say, watch this video, evaluating quadratic using the difference quotient. And after they watch it, then they'll be complete a couple of assignments, and then there'll be like a sample solution to kind of see what, you know, to follow the work if they can't really follow the video. So I kind of said, you know what? I wasn't sure if they are going to do it at home. I had flipped the classroom up a couple times. So this time I had them in class. I said, all right, guys, take out your iPads. They had headphones or whatever. They were working together, some of them. And they watched it. And then as they were doing it, they were completing their work. I'm walking around the classroom. And um, you know, some kids need more help than others. And it's a great way to differentiate instruction. Some kids are like, you know, no, go, dude, go ahead. You keep going. You go to the next one. He did this one, you keep going. Some kids who are stuck, I can you know, work with them. Some kids can work with each other. So it really, it really uh, worked out nice. About 20 kids in the class when I tried it. And um, as we were doing it, you know, some of the kids were like, well, I'm like, how about you make a video? So part of the thing is I have a couple things over here. Like this example would be me, actually, I think this is me um, in the class doing what myself. As I'm walking around, instead of sitting on the board and you know doing it like that, I'm actually physically walking around, I'm going over it, stop pausing it, we're talking. The second one, I'm back to the show too, is a student who volunteered and she did a problem. So it's kind of funny actually that she's she goes a little faster, but it's it, but it, it still it gets the kids involved and I think that's kind of where we want to be, I think. For me, I'd like to see more of the kids, and they're starting to do that. They feel more comfortable. They see me do it. The videos aren't perfect at all. There's some mistakes. You see us erasing and stuff, but it shows that we're human, but it also shows that, you know, they get into it. And I think the more that the kids see that, the more they do it, um, you know, the more engaged they are, and the, and the more uh, I think they're going to learn a lot, a, lot, a lot more. So Dr. Smith, I guess you want to click on mine first. You can hear my voice again. Sorry, but <laughs> check that one out. Matt, you were right. What? But Matt said, a you, I said you were right. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. That is shocking, I know. Anyway, he said make a substitution. Now, if you're going to make a substitution, what he hopefully meant was you're taking that X plus H and you're plugging it in everywhere you see an X in your function. So when you rewrite this, this is going to be 3 
parentheses x plus h quantity squared plus parentheses x plus h minus 1. All right, that represents the f of x plus h term. Okay, all I did again was plug in x plus h. All right, next, you follow in the formula, the next thing says minus f of x. Be very careful here. Here's where most students make mistakes. When you put the minus, make sure you put f of x in parentheses. 3x to the second plus x minus 1. And the whole thing is divided by h. The reason we put that negative in front of the parentheses is now hopefully we won't forget to distribute that. I'm having, anyway, also, I'm having all sorts of uh, flashbacks. Flash 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 yeah. 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 And they're not plus. PTSD. <laughs> a problem like that is actually a very challenging problem for a lot of the students. So one of the great things that it is, first of all, it's permanent, and they can go back and review it. You know, a lot of the kids, especially before quizzes or tests now, they can just go back. And then if it still doesn't, they can, they, you know, they, can, they can come back and we can do it together, and then they can keep looking at it and looking at it. So that's a one, another great thing is the review. Uh, and the one thing about it is it's on there forever. Now, you see I was trying to go a little slow because I'm trying to also talk at the same time. Um, you want to show this one. This is a student. She's uh, she mm -hmm. pause before. Okay. Hey, right, guys. Here we go. Okay, so to do this problem, the first thing you have to do is plug in all of the numbers. So you would get 3 times x plus h to the fourth plus 2x plus h squared minus parentheses 3x, I'm running out of room, 4, plus 2x squared, all over h. So your goal is to get the h out of the denominator because you're eventually going to plug that in for 0. So the first thing you would do is multiply this out. So if you use Pascal's triangle, it's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So after you do all of that, you should get 3 times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4x h to the third plus h to the fourth. And then you have to multiply all of that. So, um, so again, I'm getting more and more students to do that, which is great. And then they're all being put on uh, iTunes U eventually. And also, during that time, too, to, to also feel as I'm walking around through the backpack, I can send them a couple problems to really make sure they know what they're doing. Because then it's live. They can submit it right back, to, like an exit ticket. So as I'm as they're doing it, I can be like, all right, this kid really knows what he's doing. He's good. I'll send it right back to him. Or if someone's not struggling and it didn't do so well, then I can obviously spend more time with them as well. Um, the, yeah. This one. The one we did here, this is Mr. Massaro myself. Oh. 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 Yeah. The kids really like these. These kind of came out. So do we. So do we. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we. <laughs> so if you want to play one of those. Which one, Mr. Sutter? Um, play the angle bisect one. I think that was oh, that's a good one. The second one, sorry. Whoa, that's whoa, all they wanted to watch today. Whoa, 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 what is this? I said we needed an angle bisector. Didn't you hear me? No, not at all. <laughs> Listen up this time. Here's how to make an angle bisector. Okay, so here's our angle. We'll call it angle A. Ah, because A is the vertex. Right, so we've got our compass, and we always have to start our compass at a known points. Well, we only got one, so I guess I'll start there. Perfect. <laughs> we draw an arc from point A, and look, it intersects our angle at two points. B and C. Bingo! Now we can call this angle BAC. Because A is the vertex. Exactly. <laughs> well, now we've got two more points we can use to place our compass on. Great. So we'll draw an arc from point B, and we'll draw one from point C. Now we've got another intersection point, point D. And more than that, look, the arcs from B and C also intersected point A. A bisector. That's right. Now draw your line with the ruler through points A and D. Bang! Bisected. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Now we've got ray AD, and it perfectly bisects the angle. Now are you going to listen to me next time? <laughs> that was good.
That's a good thing. That was we may have to negotiate with Screen Actors Guild as well as the MTA. Seriously, yeah, yeah. teacher. I teach predominantly global world history, uh, ninth and 10th grade, and also some psychology classes. So what we've done in social studies is there's a lot of content, a lot of facts that kids need to know, a lot of critical thinking. So instead of what we've used to been doing, we decided to integrate the iPads and all the different apps that we've been doing. Do you want to show these first? Or? So this, these are, um, there's iMovie and iMovie trailer. And this idea came about very randomly. I was in the hallway, walking down the hallway. Uh, another one of my colleagues, Tara McDonald, her kids are in the hallway. They're with their iPads, doing movies. I asked her, passing, you know, what are you doing? She told me a little bit. They had some content. They learned it the night before on their own. And then they came in and they did these movie trailers. And so I just went in the classroom the next day. It wasn't a lot of planning. The kids really. Some of them used it, some of them didn't, but they're very natural. They can figure it out very easily. And they just took the material that they had gotten the night before and they created these trailers. So this was for my ninth grade class. We were doing Chinese philosophies. We're talking about philosophies that are sometimes 5,000 years old. It gets a little dry and boring. The kids had to pick a philosophy. They had to... Um, create a claim, which we're working a lot of these common core skills in class where they have to take a claim and provide evidence. So they had a, the claim was which philosophy would be best for running China. Then they would create this trailer showing how this would be the best way to organize and run a government. So that's that. understood the concepts and then we're sitting in class and each one is watching their other <coughs> groups they're talking with each other they're learning the concepts they're asking each other questions it was in my 10 years of doing this pro this project this was never even a project this was truly the best thing that they that I've ever seen them do and then when they took the test I mean it was they all got hundreds on this part so that was for the so the global I also teach psychology and we just kind of started talking about social media <coughs> and the dangers of social media and again the kids said okay we're gonna create almost like a commercial and they took the trailer the iMovie trailer some of them did iMovie so the difference is with iMovie you actually talk into it and it's a little bit longer the trailer is just like what you saw and this was three of my juniors who did one on why you should not you like turn your location off when you're away and not advertise that you're away on a vacation.
project, the, when we started playing them, we started talking about it, and then the kids had this idea of maybe working with Stacy Rosenblatt with the bullying team because they do a component on social media, maybe going into the middle school and talking to the kids and showing the kids some of this stuff. Without the iPads, without this technology, none of this would have been able to happen. They're, they're just thinking so much, they're talking about it, and they're, it carries over outside of the classroom as well. So this, this was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm in that 21st century meeting that we do also, and we're all sharing so many great ideas, and there's so much out there that we'll, it will, there's just so much to explore. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clap. <laughs> we didn't know it was over. Um, so how do we maintain the momentum? And, and you're looking at it right in front of us. The, the momentum is, is our teachers and the work of this 21st century curriculum committee and, and building it from the ground up. So we do have you know, some work for parents. We had an I Meet Your iPad night, and we've published that all on an iTunes U course. That's available for parents to download. This presentation is available. The course code is up there. It's open. Monday we have PD. We, we do hot lunches, which is hands-on technology. So our CITs, um, Bonnie Green and Katie Sheehan, are available. I'm available. The instructional leaders and assistant principals are available. But it's about speaking the same language. Um, and social media. You know, we, we are trying to encourage our teachers to share what it is that they're doing. Um, I, they will tweet it. I will retweet it. We're trying to put it out there so um, it's not just extracurricular, but it's what's going on in the classroom. And when you don't have time or you're between periods and you look at your phone and you can see what's going on inside somebody else's classroom, it helps to build <coughs> that momentum. Okay, and, and I really like this quote. We are using um, one of uh, Will Richardson's works. And this quote in here is, uh, if our emphasis rests on developing our students as learners instead of knowers, our work must shift to create more of these conditions for powerful learning in our classrooms to take place. And that's been one of the guiding texts. Um, the, the people in front of you are very humble, and um, they are um, superstars. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I just want to publicly acknowledge mm -hmm. the work that they're doing and will continue to do on behalf of our students. Two last things, just that light sale video. Um, light sale sends us a weekly report so that I can see how much kids are reading. And this video, because you know we didn't want to keep students out and not studying, and we wanted to bring them into the, the presentation, I basically printed out students who were reading a lot. And I said to Heather, I said, here's a list of kids. Go find them. <laughs> and, and basically, we randomly picked students who happened to be reading a lot on the app. And that's how those interviews um, came about. The last piece is we have also um, are starting to change what our classrooms look like. And we are finishing the the building of, of three table, uh, three sets of tables and rolling task chairs that is the first phase of our classroom redesign. So either right before or after Thanksgiving, the three lucky winners we had to pull out of a, it was a stick app, right? Like you used to pull out popsicle sticks out of a coffee can to choose students. We, we chose the, the recipients out of the 21st century um, group by, by choosing electronic sticks. So <laughs> those three lucky recipients are going to get a new set of uh, classroom furniture yeah, as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. So thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Uh, don't go anywhere. Yeah, don't. Yeah, no, don't, don't, don't. I'm sure, I'm don't sure we have some questions. <laughs> I don't have a question, but since you've made me cry and snort all in one night, <laughs> I will go first. Uh, I'm still trying to, you know, process into a coherent statement. But first of all, thank you. Thank you for caring enough to do this. Thank you for having the energy to do it. I know how much work this takes, and I know how, you know, there's this image of hand the kid an iPad and the teachers can sit back and do nothing. And I want you to know that the board knows that that is the furthest thing yes. from the truth, that it would be really easy to hand out a ditto, but you're not doing that anymore. And I want to thank you for not doing that. Um, when I see that learner be our students will become learners rather than knowers, to me that's the mission statement breathing in the hallways of the high school. 
because we're setting them up to be lifelong learners. And so you are living that for us and for our kids. And for that, I thank you. Um, when we talk about you know making our kids college ready, that Edmodo discussion on Antigone, that's what they do in college. My kids at school have discussion boards all the time. I have to explain it to my students for weeks and weeks and weeks. These kids are going to go out into the college world, and they'll be like that. They'll just know. They'll be like, you know, ducks in water. They'll be, they'll be great. So we're getting them ready in so many ways. Um, the differentiation, Jack, where do you, where do you even begin? And, and so there's this, this you know, thing about technology, and it means people don't communicate. But because of that iPad, Jack is communicating. And, and so I know how much socialization can happen because of technology. Um, it, it lets us presume competence for kids in ways that we couldn't presume competence with paper and pencil because you can differentiate in different ways. But none of that happens without a lot of creativity and a lot of care and a lot of work. And so I want to thank everybody at the high school for this kind of energy and, and um, thank Dr. Nagler for having the vision all those years ago. Um, but, but we saw things that could have been on the History Channel tonight, and we saw things that could have, you know, easily been coming from a college classroom. And, and um, I better shut up because I'll start crying again. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. I would just like to mention that the pre-calculus did bring back college nightmares <laughs> for me, and I really hope that you and Mr. Massaro both, my kids loved the videos. Yes. And it's a fifth grader, yeah, fifth grader and a third grader. And they're following along at this higher level math that you guys are doing, and they just love it, you know. Oh. How did you guys choose who gets which part? It's like <laughs> Martin and Lewis. Uh. <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't on audio. So as a, as a parent who has whose family has been part of this iPad program for the last five, for five years now. I feel like I, I've witnessed this program grow and streamline themselves and uh, streamline itself and every year it's just something new and something better coming out and I, and I, I am familiar with these three apps very well and uh, I can't thank you all enough for the way you have you have just taken this and made it your own and, and run with it. I mean, from my, my ninth grader and my fifth grader, it's just phenomenal. And I wish I had those videos when I was in school mm -hmm. because I was having PTSD sitting here looking, <laughs> looking at them. And uh, I, I, our students are really going to benefit from your time and your energy. And I, I do thank you very, very much. I envy Mrs. Matson for having kids who are about to take advantage of all this in the high school. I wish that my kids had it. I wish my students had it. Um, I also teach uh, mostly college freshmen, well, even my juniors and seniors. I still have to remind them that their own thoughts are worth thinking, their own thoughts are worth exploring. Um, a lot of people talk about this as being something that's very new, but it's actually Socratic, except that when Socrates wanted people to sit around and keep pushing questions further and, and collaborating, but that was only for the elite. Well, you brought it to everybody in our public schools, so again, thank you. I can't thank you enough. And congratulations. And I love your relationships with each other, by the way. I think it's, it's wonderful. You know, when I was walking Jackson with you the other day, and we started to talk later on about where we, you know, this next building I want to go into, and I was saying, yeah, I want to go visit the high school, but I figured I'd wait till January, February, because this was all new. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong, mm -hmm. thinking that you guys needed to settle in more with iPads. It, it just blew me away. And every time I see this stuff, I always think, no, oh, they can't top this, you know, because I, I, I'm, you know, I like tech myself. I'm always on the computer, but to see it in action like this is just it's it's so enlightening and I and it's too bad I think that the parents very often are the ones the last ones to kind of get it um, <laughs> because you know they don't have the opportunity um, to be in the classrooms you know I'm fortunate enough and we are and, and parents are too I mean I know they can but very often they're, they're working and they're, they're busy with other things but it's hard for it to translate sometimes but boy you really you really rocked it and I cannot thank you enough. And again, I, you're, you're, like you said, the relationships between you. I, I can't imagine that you would ever want to go back to, I guess, a 
free iPad um, thing. I, I know it's not perfect. I know you know sometimes things are better without an iPad. I'm sure. Um, but I, it, it, from the way you're all talking, it sounds like you would never want to kind of go back because more and more every day you see the benefits and what what other things you can do with it, and what you're all you know what you're finding. So I, that, that, that's just tremendous. Well, so unity of purpose. That's I think the I, the technology helps some unity of purpose. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Right, and I and I really do think that the big myth is that like like more we talked about before is that oh just you know we throw the iPads at kids and teacher just sits there with their, you know, their feet up <laughs> on the desk right. and has a nice cup of coffee while the kids <laughs> are, you know, and, and it can't but be, it, it, I mean, and also the idea sometimes that people think that this is to push teachers out of the profession. Absolutely not. I, absolutely not. More than ever, we see how teachers are so important. Mm -hmm. They've always been important. They're even more important. I can never see a time where a teacher is not in the classroom um, using this technology to, to enhance learning. So, again, my... My hats off to all of you. I just see the tremendous work, and I'm not waiting till January now. <laughs> I think I may have to come. Bring it on. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but and we're only two and a half months into it. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I can't get over. That's we got more work to do. So I'll wait till January. <laughs> truly, truly something to be very proud of all of you. Yeah, Thank seriously. You. So I have a couple of things. <laughs> One, thank you for taking time out and coming here this evening. As you can hear by some of the board's comments, sometimes this, only the squeaky wheels get to our ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very important to hear from people doing the job what it means for them. I've known all of you a very long time. You're all fantastic teachers. You were before the device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're even better teachers with the device. Because all of you in your souls mm -hmm. believe that kids can learn. Any kid can learn your content. Mm -hmm. and again, I've seen you do it mm -hmm. 10 years ago for some of you, mm -hmm. a, little, a little sooner for others. But um, that's the power of what we do. And it's a tool to make your life easier. And ultimately, it makes your life easier because you can connect with kids that much faster. So be proud. I am incredibly proud of all of you tonight. I knew this building was on the precipice of greatness, and you're, and you're there, you see it, you're working hard for it, you're working collaboratively to do it. Be proud. Celebrate your accomplishments. Always, always do that. You know, Jack, Jack, I love Jack. Jack is just a sh shining example. Oh, no, no, Not that Jack. No, no, no. You are. I'm not talking about one. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes. Um, if I can add a few things to that. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. Yeah, it, it's just a perfect example. But he, it, it's he's the most obvious example. There are so many others that may not be as obvious. And believe in what we're doing. We're doing great things. We're doing great things. You're accomplishing great things. And we just started. And Dr. Smith, kudos to you and your leadership in getting this done. Um, my pride is including you. I, thought, you know, I don't want you to think I'm excluding team. you. Surround yourself with good people. There you go. Oh, I learned that a long time ago, my friend. Uh, thank you again. Uh, any other comments from the board? Thank you again for coming out tonight. We really appreciate like, it. I feel like I've been given a